So this morning I just I'm just going to talk about something that's come into resolution in the last little while. Uh, some something that seemed like a dire. I stumbled across uh, somebody talking about Immanuel Kant and ultimate maxim, suppose um, something like. Never treat another as a means, uh, always as an end to themselves. So I was thinking about that, and um, there are some like basic examples where it kind of makes sense. But then, the more I was thinking about it, the more the lines between the distinctions of what a means and an ends is kind of got confused and. I didn't know exactly what that meant. It seemed like there was, there was always a little bit of both, like from a certain point of view that there's always a, a so that, you know, um, it's like there's always a so that, even if that so that is so that I always act ethically in the world. And I started to think about the nature of selfishness and altruism and i think when it gets down to it everything is ultimately it's not and that's not a new concept i think i think the way that nervous systems have has have evolved is to move towards what feels good and away from what feels bad and so it seems like there's always self-interest in everything. There's always um, a perception of what would be in the best interest of the self, even if the action is seemingly self-sacrificing. There's still the perception that in that self-sacrifice is what is in the best interest of the self and so i don't it seems like there's not a way to get a, around that so then the resolution came something like to expand the boundary of where the self is located so that then if the other is also seen as the self then self-centered action is not like restricted to this local self um and that that maybe is what love is is to take the other and or the other's best interest as your own and in doing that one then acts out what kant was trying to get at without maybe a deeper understanding of things. Maybe that I'm not too sure actually what Kant's understanding was or if it, it was the interpretation that I was listening to that made it that made it appear that way. That that there's always a so that. Um, so the other part of the resolution then is dealing with that part of it to 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 come into action as a one to one thing without imposing or overlaying anything a little quote i heard was um the art of tea is about making it and drinking it which i think illustrates that perfectly is that you just bring all of yourself to now and to what's happening now and don't try to add anything onto it there's no so that i'm making tea so that i can blah 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 just there pour the hot water in put the tea bag in 
definite magic to that that mode of being where everything is everything becomes heightened and resolves itself there's no because there's nothing being held away from from what is naturally happening it's, there's like a melting and a dissolution into the nowness and then that sense of separation that is born from the sense of I-ness that is the thing that wants to do things so that melts away and then naturally the being starts acting in service um, for the good of others not because it wants to be seen as selfish or, or there is no actual selfish motive because the 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 fundamental structure of the i-ness is then being dissolved it's there's no like workaround which i think maybe is where kant faulted is that he didn't have that um esoteric or spiritual way of looking at it or, or experiencing it and and so the, it was always trying to come from the mind and and so while the intuitive sense was there it's like always one step removed the the condition of the eye is always present and so then things the best is that there can be an appearance of being ethical um, And really, an ethical way of being is only needed when there's an established I-ness that isn't being uh, seen for what it is. Again, I'm, I might be grossly misinterpreting um, Kant's message uh, because I'm not very familiar with it and this is more coming from an interpretation so like a second hand thing uh nonetheless the importance is in the the subjective experience of the thing so i was given this thing and this thing and then how they resolved uh, that the nature of being on the one hand is inherently for its own interest and then on the other hand Kant's idea of acting ethically and how that seems to be quite contradictory to how things work um, and they're trying to be selfless Or, or treating others as an ends or sort of a way to work around the inherent selfishness is not getting to the root of the issue and so there seems to be something that doesn't work there and then and then the art of tea as being the resolving thing a lot of this or maybe the entirety of the, the, the process of healing or spiritual growth is this resolution thing where there are two things that seem opposed to each other and if that dynamic tension is maintained without choosing a side and then denying the other one if both are, um, are honored then at some point they come together in some sort of re resolution that of often seems quite paradoxical but is brilliant in its nuance and and uh, than the next. At least this has been my experience.
one thing that he did that I enjoyed though was um, this guy was saying that since you don't know what is good for another person, the only thing you can really do is make yourself better. And so coming back to that, that the problem, if, if, if you're perceiving a problem out there, like there's something in here and, and trying to deal with, out, with it out there is not actually dealing with it. So always bringing it back to how is this one? And then it seems that the real work then is actually done in that way, which then is the real selfless and self-sacrifice, because then it's put back on like where the actual problem is with the self. And then when that is dealt with, it, it dissolves or dies. And, and that is the illusory self that is then being offered uh, instead of holding on to that thing and then like pointing at something outside. Yeah, so cool. I think I've, that's what I wanted to get to. And this was quite difficult. I think I've let a little bit too much time elapse since this was all very present and alive for me. So that would be one thing to bear in mind for future content is I should get to it straight away. Uh, the excuse is the, the classic one of being dysregulated and struggling to keep things to Yeah, so I know I've spoken about this a number of times. I just keep work, keep working on that. Uh, and it's definitely improving, becoming more subtle because I'm noticing it more on different levels. So it's, it's getting better. Um, but then the, the thing is like, the only limitations that are there are the ones that are constantly believed in. And so on what level is this whole problem just like a belief? Um, and then is it even, is it somewhat of a, a bypass then to then adopt that, but then not be in the state all the time where that is the reality, like there are different levels. And so the, the apparent nature of things does have to be dealt with. And so now this is also, <laughs> this is the next dilemma is like, how, how do I, how do I orient towards this, this so-called problem now? Um, yeah, stay tuned and maybe I'll figure it out.